And here we go, final match here for Group C of the FX Open Invitational Series. I am Unstable, joined here by Literally, and for this final set here, we are going to, and final set for the night as well, actually, we are going to go into TSL Revival versus FXO's tier, and Toon Valley will be for the first game, so let's get straight into it and see how it plays out. Let's see how the conclusion of Group C is going to turn out, guys. Welcome back. We're going to be uh, tuning into uh, Protoss versus Zerkion on Toon Valley, like Unstable said. In the top right, we've got the Team SCV live player. Hailing from Korea, of course, he is Revival, playing in the blue colors of the Zerg race. And in the bottom left, we've got our Protoss player from the FXO team. He is Tyr, and he is going to be uh, dropping that pylon in that very common position. Looks like we are very lucky, once again, Unstable, to be having cross positions on this map. I think we've seen pretty much nothing but cross positions uh, anytime this map was picked. So even though it's not forced cross, uh, the gods are with us in that. <laughs> yeah, it certainly seems that way. Uh, we do see, of course, Tia checking the uh, top left-hand spot first. And let's have a quick look at what we're going to see from Revival first. Uh, it does n not look... Oh, it is going to be a hatch first, but this probe is going to get here just in time to be extremely uh -oh. frustrating. Oh, is he going to notice? No, he should be able to get that down nicely. This opens up a lot of possibilities for a cannon rush, though. The forge is about to finish up, and um, is Tyr going to go for it? Does he feel confident enough with his cannon rushing skills? This is a map where you can do it relatively easily, but it looks like uh, Tyr is not going to attempt uh, to go for that cannon rush. I would always attempt to go for it. Usually it has great success. I was even casting a game last time, uh, Unstable, where a Zerg uh, went hatch first at the third base location, and the probe scouted it, and I was like, cannon rush, cannon rush it, do it, do it, there's no way you can... Oh, like that? <laughs> Yeah, oh. like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, the pylon is now coming down, but is, the, is this a real cannon rush? Or is this a bit of a fake? And at least it's forcing a big uh, reaction out of revival right now. The probe is getting very low on HP. The pylon does end up getting cancelled. Yeah, exactly. Alrighty, so... <clears throat> looks like Tyr is actually checking over here for a quick third base. Not just yet. We got the pool finishing up in the main now for revival. No gas just yet. Uh, for him, and I'm just like it only just happened uh, about a few hours ago. But I'm trying to remember how Revival played against San. But I, I, if I remember right, it was the Warp Prism and Mortal players that just really crushed him. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we didn't really get to see his full potential there, as it is a very strong build to, and very difficult for a Zerg to deal with. Yeah, that's uh, Immortal Sentry all in in, uh, in the first game, I believe. In the second game, Revival was just way out of position, mm -hmm. and that Warp Prism uh, near his natural, the unit just got in way too good of a position for our, uh, for San to be able to lose that game. So let's see if Revival is going to be playing the same style here. He's not grabbing the earliest of uh, third bases right now. He's actually going to grab rather a late third, considering the current uh, ZVP meta game. Revival is going to choose to get two queens out first. And usually you'll see, uh, you know, one queen at the most, and then that third base. But uh, not this time around. And oh my god, holy Batman! A little up on the other side of the map, we see a third base for Dare at the four minute fifty mark. And wow. this Overlord is going to scout it. That is extremely greedy right here. He hasn't even finished the wall off for his main, and he's already going over here to wall off the nat. Uh, sorry, the third. That is extremely greedy. He's left his probe on the outside here, so nothing's really going to change behind that. Uh, he's going to come back over here, probably put another gateway down, I believe, to finish that off. But that is extremely greedy. That is that is extremely greedy indeed. I'm curious to see how Revival is going to react to this, because we have never seen anything like this before in uh, professional play. At least not in the games that I've been watching uh, recently, and I've been watching a lot of StarCraft. So, yeah, what is Revival going to do? Is he going to be aggressive here? Is he going to grab a fourth, a fifth, a quick hive? A quick hive. <laughs> a 10 minute hive. I'd love to see that one day. No. Um, I don't know. Like, honestly, the, it's a very weird situation to be in right now. Uh, he obviously knows that nothing's really going to be coming all that soon from Tia. But I'm sure even he's sitting there going, hang on. That's really interesting. <laughs> but <clears throat> he's going to get his third base up and running uh, as quick as he can. He obviously could get uh, straight to his drone count really quickly. <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't have to worry about any form of aggression out of tier for uh, a little while. Uh, maybe we're going to see uh, the first ever 12-gate uh, all-in or something out of <laughs> three bases. <laughs> you know, first it was the, the one base four-gate, and then it was the two base eight-gate. And now we've advanced to the point where we get, uh, where we grab three quick bases versus Zerg, and then just 12-gate them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, if it works, it works. 
That's all I can say to that. <laughs> the next step in uh, the ZVP uh, evolution, you know, first it was always, you know, one basing it up a little bit and then two basing it up a little bit. Mm. <laughs> now we're going to be three basing it up. Anyway, I just, I find this build hilarious, but let's see how it works out for tier. I'm, uh, I'm curious. Yeah, so we do see him working out those rocks with that cannon on the right hand side. However, uh, a revival is choosing to go to that uh, max drone count really quickly on three bases. He's already at 59 drones. He's got another 10 in production. Only just now going for his lair, mainly because he just didn't have the gas before that. It took him a while to get his gases down. And that's going to be the limiting factor. It's not so much what he can build, it's how much gas he can make to actually get things done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gas, of course, uh, a very pivotal role for actually both races here. I mean, Revival needs to get a lot of gas to be able to advance uh, towards Hive Tech really quickly, which is, in my opinion, one of the one of the few... Wow, another 18 drones coming out. That is sick. Revival going to be going up to 90. 85 drones. Yeah, that's quite a lot. 84, to that's... be exact. Uh -huh. Oh, he just made... Oh, actually, yeah, he would have just made two buildings. That's right. <laughs> he just made a hatchery and... Uh and another evo chamber so looking at this for revival now he's pretty much set to just start pumping through the upgrades however this is the most dangerous time for him as well because tier uh, could come out at any point catch him off guard uh it's wool with a warp prism no less that's probably that's exactly what tier is thinking i'm i would assume right now Ooh. yep the warp prism is going to be uh the first form of aggression here how many gateways do we have down i don't think we have that many one two three that I can see. Yeah, only three gateways so far. We see more gateways now being dropped down, the fourth and a fifth one. And uh, the Robotics Bay is on the way. The first uh, Colossus should be hitting the field in not too much time. And this is uh, the most weird PPZ I've ever seen. I feel like there's not that many intelligent things I can say about this because we've never seen this situation before where we're at the 10 minute mark. Uh, no form of aggression is taking shape yet for the Protoss. I mean, yes, there is that War Prism, but with only three to five gateways, what are you really going to be able to do? Mm. Well, Given the fact that he's getting uh, our, uh, warp prism speed as well, he can just dart from base to base to base uh, and just keep warping in units over again. But we do see... Oh, actually. We've got warp overload prisms. speed, but not uh, overload transport. So that's very interesting. Alrighty, so he's going to drop down three zealous there. And look at this, he's actually probably going to go to the uh, third base at the same time. But there's actually no units out on the field for Revival at all. He's got a total of six Zerglings, and that's it. <laughs> and he's actually yeah, going to catch it. all of these drones, uh, it, unless he used too much energy on that uh, Queen. But no, you still got a lot of energy here. Revival completely caught unawares by this. we got a lot of Zerglings and a lot of Roaches on the way. He's actually going to target down this hatchery. Is he going to get it, though? I Ooh, maybe. Oh, maybe with good force field, those zealots are still hacking away at the hatchery. The hatchery's only oh. at 200 HP. The sentries get lift up and stay alive, but the zealots oh. are going to fall, and so is the hatchery. Wow, that was a great job by Tyr there, sniping that fourth base off. Mm. Because when you're on three bases yourself as Protoss, you don't really need to snipe the fourth. Uh, snipe the third, just snipe the fourth. Talking about a fourth, Revival trying to re-expand to the top left side of the base. Or the map, I should say. Four sentries this... and a zealot are DPSing away at this hatchery, and I think you'll get it again. Force the cancel. Nicely done by Tyr here with this war prism. Very late timing, of course. Around the 10, 11 minute mark is when that war prism came out, but it is doing major damage to uh, Revival right now. Yeah, it definitely is. Tyr needs to be, uh, be careful about a counterattack now. A revival going straight to Hive, of course. Got d uh, double plus two on the way. And he's going to jump behind here again. He's he needs to be careful. Yes, force field of the Queen's out. Oh, he's missed a sentry. Oh, got him. But there's a fungal coming out from these. And now Tyr is forced to drop everything because he cannot get away. No, the sentry War Prism Morass is now going to be officially over. No additional War Prisms out on the map. And the first Colossi have started hitting the field right now. The first one's already out. Thermal Lens about ha uh, a little bit over halfway done. We've got plus two attack coming up. Do we only have one forge for Tyr? I find that surprising considering he grabbed that early of a third base. I would have expected him to go uh, double forge a little bit earlier. But uh, actually, yes, he does, have a he does have another forge. I just... Just not near the first forge. It yeah. is in the main base, so he is going to be double upgrading and trying to keep up with the Zerg a little bit. But the uh, supply advantage and the upgrade advantage is definitely in favor of Revival. And looks like he wants to utilize that advantage by attacking now. Yeah, he needs to be careful. That Colossus at the front, though. Fungal's going down. That Colossus cannot move. Uh, he did catch Tyr a little bit off guard there at that point in time. However, Tyr will defend quite nicely with great force field positions. Look, it was just one clear line cutting the army completely in half. 
However, he is still down 40 supply. We got a greatest fire on the way. We got 10 corruptors coming out. And uh, this is going to be very difficult for Tia. It definitely is Tia. Um, <clears throat> a little bit on the back foot right now, but I think he's actually going to be fine until, of course, those good lords hit the field. Then is when he to to, has to start worrying. A nice fungal here, making sure that uh, a few of those investors are going to get away. The revival actually going to turn around. I'm not sure about this decision. The Colossi are in a pretty good position, and they are doing a massive amount of damage here. The supplies are equalizing a lot, but this is just giving Revival a lot of room to uh, warp in or morph in as many Broodlords as he wants. The Corruptors, of course, uh, chilling in the middle of the map or near the middle of the map, and we should see them morphing into Broodlords in just a few seconds when Revival uh, finishes up that Greatest Fire. And there we go, nine Broodlords coming in. Yeah, this is going to be the really difficult part for Tia to be able to deal with. He's been behind him supply mm -hmm. this entire time. Uh, it's now, uh, he's actually expanding yet again down here. He wants to play extreme late game uh, at this point in time. Baneling Nest being morphed here for Revival as well. Now, uh, looking here, the one thing I've actually seen, I've only seen it in one or two games, uh, just being messed around with, is in an extreme late game uh, of this matchup. I have seen a couple of times a Zerg just get like 20 to 30 Banelings, and if a Vortex goes down, runs the Banelings into them. <laughs> Uh, as a try uh, to try and counter off the Archons doesn't work all that well, uh, depending on what type of units go in there. But it's something that we could be seeing here from Revival. No, oh, he's blinked forward into Fungals here. Tyr in a lot of trouble as those Brood Lords are just going to be tearing through everything. Tia has to retreat here. He lost a lot of those Stalkers. The worst possible time for him to blink forward right there, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the worst time to blink forward indeed. Now nothing but Stalkers, of course, coming in for Tyr. <clears throat> freeing up a little bit of supply, and he goes and blinks forward again, times one, two Broodlords will get a third, the fourth will probably not fall, actually it will, these Stalkers man, they've got some uh, good upgrades apparently, they've got plus two attack, the Broodlords of course no armor upgrades, so those things do good damage against them, and it looks like Tyr is gonna be pushing through here, there's only a few Broodlords left, though, with another warp in of Stalkers that is now coming in, ten Stalkers being warped in, he should be able to clean that last Broodlord up with no problems, one Broodlord of course not as dangerous, because the Broodlings are easily gonna be able to get killed, and Revival actually now on the back foot, it looks like Tyr has done it. He defended against the uh, Broodlord aggression, and now it is his turn to attack. Yeah, there really just wasn't any uh, backup on the fold, or ground support, uh, sh I should say, for those Broodlords. It allowed those Stalkers to really just tear through them uncontested. We got five Colossi now, and they do have uh, double plus two upgrades here. So this is going to be very difficult for Revival to deal with. He's got 12 more Corruptors on the way to try and deal with these Colossi. But he has to pick, does he keep them as Corruptors or does he turn them into Broodlords to help deal with the Stalkers? That's his decision right now. There is uh, spine crawlers on the left-hand side, but not where Tyr is coming through. He's going straight for the throat. Looks like he's going up into the main here, literally. And, and I don't think there's any way Revival can stop him. I don't think so either. The army for Tyr is just too good right now. <clears throat> Revival's not even maxed out. Here come the Zerglings. They died pretty much before anything else arrives and what the hell is Revival doing? That was the worst attack I've ever seen. I don't think he <laughs> even killed anything there. His Broodlords uh, weren't there, the Corruptors weren't there. That was basically just 40 Zerglings and two Infestors, you know, screaming uh, for for the for the swarm or something and then sacrificing themselves in a desperation attempt. And here come the Broodlords though. There is about eight of them on the field, I would say. Seven of them now, three more morphing in, but the Stalkers blink forward and without any ground support for these Broodlords, three of them fall immediately. The fourth one's gonna die as well and blink will be done soon so the Stalkers can just blink to the other side and finish the last few of them up. Tier will be going up 1-0 and be that much closer to advancing to the next round of the Apex Open Invitational number six as Revival is, um, you know, he's slowly dying. He's still morphing Brute Lords. He's still making Zerglings. There it, there is. it is. The GG. Alrighty, so congratulations to Tia. He will go one up in this series. We'll be right back after a quick two-minute commercial break with our next game.